Hi, welcome to CEO Check-In. It is Wednesday again, halfway through the week. You're almost there. And I got up this morning and went to the gym and started working with a new trainer, which was super fun. And also a reminder that trainers make you do stuff you don't really want to do. I had to do all these lunges that were like miserable. And he kept telling me like, these have an amazing impact on toning your legs, which is one of the things I told him I wanted to do. And it was a reminder that trainers, coaches, we're all in the same boat where we're trying to help people get results by doing things that they may not want to do, right? That's one of my favorite definitions of a coach is a coach is someone who makes you do the things you don't want to do so you can become the person you want to become. My coaches all really put that into practice with me. Sometimes they had me researching competition or raising my prices or looking at limiting beliefs or studying my strategy and figuring out why it wasn't the right one and finding a different one, a better one. These were all things that I didn't want to do and wouldn't have done on my own. And it's really why I became a coach is I'm so grateful to all of them for the ways they've helped me. And I continue to work with coaches and trainers and I'm excited to get into shape this winter and I'll let you follow along. I took some before pictures that I posted to Instagram story this morning. So excited for some after pictures in a few weeks. Anyway, today we are going to just have some live coaching, which I'm really excited about. We've had some amazing guests on here, including Kristen Gallagher last week from Wild Rock Marketing, sharing a lot of really great tips about things you can be doing right away that are low cost or no cost. So if you missed that episode, be sure to watch it in Instagram TV or on my YouTube channel. And in a minute, we're going to bring on B, who is one of our graduates. She runs Women Repair Zone, and she graduated our recent Million Dollar Women Masterclass. First, I'm going to do my Go Big tip, and then we'll do some live coaching, and hopefully we'll have time for a couple of people today. So today's Go Big tip is about learning to take risks. So many women struggle with risk-taking qualities, so feeling like I'm doing the right thing by not making a decision, I really want to question that and challenge you to think about how can I get more comfortable with taking risks, trusting my intuition, saying yes, because truly the only bad decision is no decision. And so often we have women who have you know, read my book, watched all my videos, done all the research. I just got off one of these calls this morning and she's so ready to scale up her business and there's so much potential there that she doesn't know how to unlock, that we could help her unlock. But when it comes down to making the decision, am I gonna join the program or am I not gonna join the program? She falls back on what a lot of women do, which is, well, I just have to think about it or I just need 24 hours. When in fact, really the way to grow your company is to get comfortable making decisions fairly quickly with the information at hand and trusting your instinct. This is what top CEOs do all day long is make big decisions. My team comes to me and says, should we spend $10,000 on this Facebook ad? Should we hire this freelancer for $8,000? And I just make a decision on the spot because that's something my coaches help me learn to do. So if that sounds a little bit like you, if you're a little bit like Barbara, the woman I was talking to this morning, and that's not her real name to protect her privacy, um, where she was like, I want this, I want this, I need this, but I just need 24 hours to think about it. If you're someone who does that, I'd love you to think about how can I get more comfortable with risk taking? Maybe it's go sign up for a trainer at your gym and have that person pull you out of your comfort zone and make you do things you don't usually do. Maybe it's join an entrepreneur's group. Maybe it's set up a call with a coach, me or someone else, and take the risk of finding out, hey, I'd love to help you think about how me, but it's now providing services nationally, where she helps women repair their cars, their heaters, their toilets, anything that is broken in <laughs> your house, B can help repair. Right, B? I hear you. I hear you, but I don't see you yet. Uh Oh, huh, that's interesting because I can see myself. On there you are. Feed. Okay. Awesome. Good to see you today. You too. You too. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm just curious because you took the leap to, you know, take our program and take a risk. Did any of that resonate with you? What I was talking about before about how women sometimes struggle with taking risks? Yes, but because of the background that I had, you know, working as a CEO of Girls Inc. of Chattanooga and other things that I had done, 
um, I'm, I'm used to taking risks. So how did you get there? Because I know there are people watching who are like, I'm not there. I need 24 hours to make any decision. <laughs> um, therapy. Because, you know, I grew up in a very risk averse household. Um, two parents who are Holocaust survivors and um, very, very, very afraid of taking um, any risks and not letting us take any risks. And I was, and I was by personality, somebody who was always pushing against the edge, always wanting to try things that are, you know, scary and different. Um, so therapy. That's so interesting. Yeah. Do you think maybe partly as a reaction against your parents? Because I know a lot of Holocaust survivor families, I'm Jewish as well, and mm -hmm. that definitely breeds a kind of, or can breed a kind of fear of risk taking. Do you think yours was a bit of a reaction against being raised that way? I think it was definitely that way. And what's ironic is, is that my son um, also rebelled against me because even though you think that you're, um, you've, you well, you've overcome your parents' messages to some degree. This is probably before therapy. Um, I always told them about how the world's a dangerous place. So he mm. also rebelled against me. Interesting. So, yeah. Wait, how do you rebel against an entrepreneur? What did he like, go get a corporate job? What does that look like? <laughs> no, this is when he was much younger. And before oh, wait, I was younger. doing this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for that little detour. But you know, I'm very passionate about helping more women kind of stand up for themselves. And, you know, I do think this is a huge, huge pain point, you know, where people have trouble taking risks. And so thank you for sharing that you actively went out to get help with that, right? Therapy, Absolutely. coaches, there's a lot of people who can help help us get over that. But I think some women really think like, well, I can still get ahead and grow my business without ever taking a risk. And then it's a bit of a tough wake up call when it's like, just that's not working. Yeah, you have to be afraid not you have to be afraid that it's not, not be afraid of failure. Because if you don't try, you're not going to get to where you want to go. And you have embodied that so beautifully. During, I know I, I always tell your story, but I always love to tell it that, you know, when, uh -huh. when the pandemic hit and we all got locked down, B was yeah. teaching in-person classes in Tennessee because we have new people watching who don't know your story and people yes, always yeah. watch later too. And mm -hmm. she had to just really quickly figure out, okay, how do I take this whole operation virtual or make zero dollars and you did go virtual you figured out all the tech really quickly you then quickly went national you've now been teaching women across the country and i know you're now busy you know quickly learning online marketing scaling up so i'm so right. glad you come on today and tell us Thank a little you. bit what you've done so far so we can celebrate you and women can learn from you but also happy to coach and help with whatever might be feeling like a challenge today so we're now have customers in six states um, which is very exciting. We, um, yes. I took the risk of investing um, um, for us heavily in marketing, and that's actually um, yielding results. One of the places I invested in didn't work out, but that's just part of it. You know, you don't know until you try. And so starting to get, you know, more customers coming in, which is a huge relief because most of September and a chunk of October was very quiet, but it's- I remember that because you came on CEO check-in yeah. and said it was a quiet fall. Oh, it was just devastating. Tough. But you just keep on thinking about, you know, how else you can, how else you can move things. Um, so, so, so that's been really good. I added in a, a lot of new classes and I'm going to be in um, two publications, one which is um, focusing on the chambers, I'm focusing on what you can do virtually as a as a as a gift um and we're the they're only fo focusing on three different businesses and we're the first one that they list so that's exciting oh that's great um, and i would yeah. be curious backing up a minute you said you tried a few things in marketing and some worked and some didn't we've been talking a lot about marketing here on ceo check-in and everyone's having to figure out very quickly how to be good at digital marketing <laughs> do you mind sharing more specifically what worked and what didn't so um, Google was a total bust um, compared Meaning to- Meaning like Google AdWords? Like yes, spending yeah, money on yeah. AdWords? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google um, was a total bust compared to um, Facebook. And okay. Facebook in the past didn't work very well, but now it was working. Uh, and we're also doing Pinterest, which has not yielded customers yet, but is really, but people are sharing and pinning our ads. Mm. So nice. That's yeah. That's great. Um, I, and long term, yeah. that builds brand visibility, too. Yes, yes. Um, and then 
I had advertised on our local NPR station, which before the pandemic had yielded a lot of customers for an expensive four day workshop. And this time it was nothing. And I th think it's because there were less people driving to work. Um, ah, even though there's so less people out. listening to NPR. That's what I think. And I asked them about that before I, um, before I, you know, invested the money because it's expensive. So, um, but the, the, the question I wanted to ask you that I could use. Yes, but before we do that, I just want to applaud yes. you uh -huh. for trying all those different things, right? Because that, that, this is exactly what I mean by risk taking, right? Mm -hmm. One of them yes. may or may not work out, but none of them are going to work if you don't try any of them. And That's we also so know true. as entrepreneurs that that same thought can go around in your head for weeks or months of like, oh, I should try radio. I should try Google, right? And just even clearing up the brain space, B, of like, yep, tried that, didn't work. You can use that time and energy to go find your next cool thing that's going to mega work. So none of it is in vain. And I'm really proud of you that you tried all those different things, especially during a pandemic when it's hard to, you know, part with your hard-earned dollars to do it. Yeah, well, I had a choice, right? It was either having a business, you know, getting customers or not. So you just have to, you have Take to go that risk. forward. Yep, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'd love to hear what your question is today and see if I can be helpful. So I, I would like to get on shows like the Today Show and Good Morning America. Um, I, I really believe strongly that what we're offering is so unique and so different and so needed now with people being home and doing way more home improvements. I mean, Lowe's and Home Depot are, their, their um, sales are you know, increasing exponentially, 40 and 50%. So this is a, a perfect, a perfect show and I don't know how to, I wanted to hire a PR firm, but they're, they're expensive. The one that I really wanted to hire was $4,000 a month for a six, and it requires six month contract and that's just not happening. And then the other one that I looked into um, that Bianca used, you know, they got her a lot of placements, but it didn't result in any sales. So, um, and although you have different, line. you have different businesses, right? So that's yes. not necessarily yeah. apples to apples. What was exactly. one of her best placements that she got from that? Was there any actual like cable TV or something a little more significant? Do you remember? I mean, she got she got a, a television show. Um, she got uh, two placements in Bustle, which is a women's magazine online that's very popular. Um, but I, I and really the other like thing it. I want to caution against is we can't always directly connect because I worked with PR firms for years mm -hmm. for my product yeah. business. We can't always directly connect the lift that gives you with the sales, right? Because Facebook ads, someone clicks, you get to track the pixel. It's so clear that the person came right. from Facebook. But if you are on a TV show or featured in something, people don't always, you know, pick the drop down from your website of where they heard about you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is possible she's getting signups that came at least in part from that. Uh, but I hear you. It didn't make some major lift in her business. So it didn't give you the feeling like, yeah, I want to go do that. Right. So I'm th and I'm very good. I mean, locally, at least, you know, I'm very good at getting coverage because I know the re I know the reporters. I just was on. Um, WRCB TV. They did an interview with me um, on, on their after, you know, their morning show, which is very popular. So, I'm. I mean, I don't. I have no problem pitching. You know what it is that we do, but I don't know how to make those contacts to those bigger national shows. And I know that with the number of um, queries that they get to be able to stand out, you need somebody who knows somebody. So I'm Correct. looking for, you know, for you know, maybe some of the um, alumni who are part of Million Dollar Women or elsewhere to kind of make those connections so I can get, get on those shows. Yes, and I think, look, there is no shortcut to those shows or else we all would have found it, right? And mm -hmm. that is yeah. kind of the holy grail of television. I would say maybe set your sights on doing more local news shows because one, that could lead directly to business. People who watch local news tend to also you know, buy from local businesses. And even though you're now, you know, serving nationally, I think you could appeal to that market. And then once you do go approach the Today Shows and the Good Morning Americas, if you can say like, look, I've been on these, you know, three or four local news shows, that's going to make your case much stronger. I don't personally know of anyone who's gotten on those big national morning shows without a PR person, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, right? Okay. And uh, there's a reason those 
PR people can charge the big dollars is that they do have the ear of those shows. But yeah. I do know people who've gotten on morning shows and gotten articles written up about them in Entrepreneur and in Business Week just from reaching out. So there's a woman okay. in our community who's had a lot of luck with that. Um, you can write to her in the Facebook group. Her name is Shannon Wilkinson. Okay. And if you've seen her pop up in our Facebook group. Um, one way you could get to know her a little bit is, you know, the bonus videos section of our portal that you still have yes. access to, the Masterclass portal. She uh -huh. taught a whole video about raising your visibility online. This is her expertise. Okay. So you could watch that video, get a couple tips, and then feel free to write to her in the Facebook group, because I'm sure other people would like to know as well. And uh -huh. just say, you know, what are a couple of tips you could give me? I'm starting to reach out to these magazines to try to get my own PR. She's had some pretty good success with that. Okay. Does she own, is that her business, what she does for a living or? She is not a PR business, but she works with journalists all the time. She does, she manages the online reputation of high net worth people and high net worth companies. Okay. Okay. So she just knows that world really well. She's a very active member of our community, a graduate master class, a real give back person. I know she'll answer it. The other thing you could look at is when we did the summit this year, the Million Dollar Women's Summit, we had a panel discussion with two journalists, and then Wendy Lieber from Content Bacon. And all they did was talk about how do you get on the radar of a journalist. So I know we sent those around at the time. If you email us, we could give you access again to that. It's probably buried in your email somewhere. But okay. we had a whole hour-long discussion with these. I remember that, yeah. Remember I that? Go, yeah. I go through my notes. Okay, yeah. From, from on, oh, and we sent you the notes as well, remember? Mm -hmm. So yep. you probably have the notes on that. Because people absolutely do reach out to journalists and get – covered, right? It happens every day. But there's right. a very specific way of making that happen. You have to sort of couch your story as part of something bigger than just you. You have to have a great subject line. You have to follow up a bunch of times. I mean, it's more steps than I can outline here right now. Right. But we have seen people get their make their own PR magic, you know, when they really dedicate time to it. Okay. That also gave me the idea is that maybe I could um, also try to get on some because I, I'm, I've, I'll have I've been on a lot of local news here and regional. Bosa was on an old house, um, Ask This Old House on PBS. Um, so That's a good one. Yeah, that was, that was huge. Um, so maybe I can reach out to some of the local um, TV stations in some of the markets where we already have some customers in yes. Texas, in South Carolina, and elsewhere, and see if they will cover us. And if that clip is still online, obviously put a link to the clip of what you were okay. already in, right? Because you've yeah. already proven you can do television. And then you could also reach back out to those producers and say, hey, you know, do you have colleagues at morning shows in other cities mm, okay. that I could contact? Because often, you know, just like coaches know each other, right? Yes. TV anchors know each other, producers know each other. So whoever the producer was you dealt with on that show, the person who booked you and sent you all the information and sent you the link afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Can't hurt to ask, right? They may know someone who they, you know, they could say, hey, we interviewed B. it was awesome, you should have her on your show. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea because that, that woman um, is a big fan. So awesome, totally even better, it, yes. Yeah, and maybe, you. you know, if she would be willing, get on a call with her, even better, right? She's gonna give you way more information on a phone call. Maybe yes. you could just reach out and say, hey, you know, we're going, we're, we're doing so many exciting things, really looking to serve more markets and, you know, I'd love to just grab 15 minutes with you on the phone and then maybe mm -hmm. she could tell you, you know, about yeah. some friends of hers or people you could contact. I like that. So I think those are your probably your three best things is okay. you know, reach out on a re -watch, watch Shannon's video, reach out to her on Facebook and say, what would your tips be for getting, you know, myself noticed by some of these morning shows or publications? And then third, call back people who've already interviewed you and see who they think you should be talking to because they may have some really great personal connections. Yep, that's a great idea. Awesome. Thank you. Well, so Thank nice you. to have you on, V. Yes, great oh, to see delightful you. Delightful to be here. So good to have you with us. We always love having grads back on. I know you're still active in the community and we are cheering for you and know that so many women have benefited from you teaching them how to repair things. I actually had my brother here this weekend repairing stuff and I was like, oh, I should ask B. <laughs> <laughs> The so classes are really, they're really fun, you know. Well, we'll just... throw something in the chat so that people who are watching today know where to find, you know, the website and everything. I know, of course, okay. they can follow you, but, you know, put your URL in the chat so people can find you. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Super. Okay. Thanks for coming on. Bye. You're welcome. Enjoy the day. Bye. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.
it was so interesting to hear about how B went and got help with risk taking, right? She said that she knew that she grew up in a household that was pretty risk averse and that she was going to have to overcome that if she was going to grow her business. And it is so paying off that she did that because she took the risk to join our program. She took the risk to try out different marketing tactics. She took the risk to reach out to a big national brand that does home gardening and they now have a partnership. So I hope that that's inspiring to you. It's very inspiring to me. And I want to see, we, maybe we have one more person who wants to go live. And if not, we will wrap up. I see we have some new people who came on today. Dr. Hura, welcome. Um, if you want to go live, just send me a little ping and I will bring you on. I see that we have our new masterclass member, Anne, who is, has joined from the Netherlands. Welcome, Anne. And we have Rabia of Rabia, Rabia Shah Consulting who we've heard a lot about her business and how she's scaling up, reaching entrepreneurs who want help and executives who want help during this time. Okay, I'm gonna wait one more minute and if not, we will jump off, but it was so good to see all of you today. We will have guests coming on. Oh, thank you, B just put the URL for Women Repair Zone. We have guests coming up on our future CEO check-ins. We trade off between guests and live coaching. If there's something you're dying to hear about, let me know, we can invite a guest on. We've heard about negotiating, we've heard about LinkedIn, we've heard about marketing tips that are low or no cost, we've heard about branding, fundraising, but if you have a pressing question, just DM me on Instagram and we will find an expert to come on CEO check-in. Our goal is just to support you as you get through this difficult time of the pandemic and recession and just keep making money, growing your business and going big, whatever that means now. Please don't feel pressure that this has to be your million dollar year. I've had a lot of women calling saying, I was gonna be a million dollar year, but now it's not. And I just want you to take that pressure off if you're feeling that way, because there are elements that are out of your control affecting business right now. So I just want you focusing on what is your, in your control, just like B is doing. What new things can I try? What risks can I take that might pay off? And how can it be part of supportive communities that can help me through this time? We're so glad you're in our community. I wish you a wonderful day. Stay brave, go big, and I'll see you next week on CEO Check-In. Oh, and I almost forgot. We are having a media night tonight. The Million Dollar Women Fund is putting on a media night. So if you want to join us, it's totally free. You can just email anire at juliapim.com, and I posted about this in stories as well. Uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., we are watching a documentary called She Did That. We're all going to watch it from our own homes, but connect on Zoom and talk about it. It's going to be a lot of fun, super casual, and show up in your PJs. Uh, we'd love to have you with us. We have a lot of women who are already RSVP'd, but we have room for more because it's virtual. All you need is a Netflix account and a Zoom account. Um, maybe we could throw into the chat anire at juliapim.com if someone from my team could do that. That would be awesome for people watching. And just send us a little email and we will get you hooked up for tonight. We're meeting at six o'clock. Gonna grab our phones, be on Zoom, say hi to each other, and then we're gonna teach you how to do Netflix group viewing on your laptop. You don't have to know how to do it already. And then you can watch the movie with us and we're gonna talk about it after. The Million Dollar Women Fund is our nonprofit arm, which provides scholarships to women of color entrepreneurs, if you're not familiar with it. So we're very excited to have this discussion tonight. And the film is all about black women entrepreneurs in a variety of industries. I can't wait to learn their stories. I haven't seen it yet. Our wonderful program coordinator, Aniri Ikomi, organized the whole thing. So bravo to you. Uh, and I will see many of you tonight. And if not, I'll see you next week on CEO Check-In. Take care. Bye.